Hello YouTube land, my name is Kestel Caden and today we are going over the Redstone Daylight Sensor. This will be introduced in Minecraft 1.4.7, but if you want to test it out, it's currently available as part of the 13W01A release, which is 2013 Week 1. If you haven't actually checked out my Nether Quartz Ore tutorial, I'd suggest you do that. The annotation is above, but if you already have an or already know what it is, then let's just jump right in. To get started, you'll want to use glass along the top. You'll want to then use Nether Quartz along the center and grab some slabs of wood, doesn't matter which type, and just, you know, place them along the bottom. This will create a daylight sensor. Keep in mind that this is a new block in Minecraft, so you can probably have a lot of fun with it. Just saying. Okay, so we will be doing a few different types of sensors just to get you in the hand, like get you in the flow of things. Just going to space these out a little bit. Okay, so first and foremost, note that yeah, there is some current already, but that's because it's daytime. So what we will be doing is dragging this out as far as we can just to see how it is. Okay, so this is the current one that's here. As the day goes by and as the sun starts to set, you'll note that the current will slowly dissipate along the edges, which is nice. It's really, really nice. Keep in mind that you can use basic Minecraft mechanics for this, so if you haven't checked out my Redstone Logic Gates tutorial, you can have a lot of fun with this. But one of the ones that we're going to be focusing on today is actually the Knot Gate in conjunction with the daylight sensor because what that will do is it'll basically turn it into a night sensor which could be used to create you know automatic lighting so what you'll want to do is place a, I'd say two to three blocks of redstone powder place a block place a redstone torch on the opposite end and then wherever you want to go so let's drag it out all the way to the end just to you know show in comparison as to what's going on. This one will be very similar, but this is actually another feature which you can actually utilize in here for whatever reason. It's useful though. And if you place a block on top of the light sensor, it will show less light. As you can see, this one now is fully powered because it's almost noon, and this one Oh, it was actually not fully powered just a second ago, but it looks like because of that, it works. However, don't worry about that. We're actually going to be speeding things up a bit shortly. We're actually going to be moving time. So time set, what is it? 2700? Oh, whoopsies. I did that wrong. So what? 5000? That is noon. Let's bring it to 8000. Okay, just to show you guys the difference. So here already we have a powder being, you know, non-powered. This one is still fully powered. Let's see what will happen if I grab a few extra dirt blocks just to surround the light sensor a little bit more. This will give you an idea of if anything, if anything at all happens. Actually, I haven't even tested this out, but I'm, according to this, if I recall reading, it's based on the proportionality of how much light can actually enter, though I'm not sure if it will make a difference. We will find out. It doesn't look to make too much... Oh no, actually it started to, you know, get less light. Okay, so let's find out really, really quickly, see if I can remove these. Because this just could be coincidence or some sort of placebo effect that I'm experiencing. So, let's find out. No. Get rid of that one. So yeah, it looks like that is a placebo effect. So as long as something is on top, it will weaken the daylight sensor. But keep in mind that this can only be affected by direct sunlight or daylight. So this will not work if you're trying to power your daylight sensors with torches or anything else related to that. Just keep that in mind. That is all. Okay, so now that the sun is slowly starting to go down, you can see that this one's also starting to get unpowered as well. This one is already going even further down, which is interesting. Let's have a little bit of fun. So now that the sun's actually going down, I'm actually going to speed it up just a little bit more. Let's say, what is this, 15? No, that's too far down. 12,000? Okay, so this one is starting to ready dissipate. This one is also really starting to dissipate. As you can see, 
it's kind of neat. So let's see what will happen if we actually move a couple blocks here. Absolutely nothing. So it, yeah. So you can actually put this in any direction. It will not weaken the amount of sunlight going into it, or at least the output of sunlight. So you can actually make this omnidirectional and it'll work. What we're going to do is wait for this one block to go, oh, last one. And then this one will actually be a little interesting, seeing as it will be the nighttime sensor. As you'll see in a couple seconds, this will soon light up as soon as, there, there it goes, there it goes. So this is a nighttime sensor, which is actually really, really neat. If you want it to happen a little bit earlier throughout the day, so let's say if I was to go to, what is this, 14,000? No, that's too far already. 13,000. So 12,500. Okay, we'll remember that number in a second. Let's say you wanted to activate it a little bit earlier. What you'll want to do, I'm actually going to switch into creative mode. What you'll want to do is actually move the block a little bit ahead. So let's just put it over here and put the torch here. Remember that it was, yeah, 12,500. It's still activated right now, but that's because this is no longer powered. As long as this is not powered, it goes through the block. This is an inverter. The default state is on, so it will invert the current. This is effectively, you can actually set it to just the beginning of sunset based on the amount of blocks that you actually moved across. So yes, as you can see, this is actually going to activate really soon. And this is actually activating sh sooner than it was previously. So just keep that in mind. I'm actually going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to push it a little bit further just to give you guys a further example of this. So as you can see, this is now powered over here, which is right before sunset. So let's actually move it down a little bit more. So this is probably going to be the last block, actually. Oh, wait. As you can see, this one will soon, you know, turn off, which will then turn this light on shortly, which will power the rest of the redstone. There you go. So this is pretty much a conclusion as to how to utilize the daylight sensor in Minecraft. I hope you guys have learned a little bit. I sure have, especially with uh, dissipating, you know, omnidirectionals and trying to cover up more of the daylight sensor. So do keep those little things in mind when actually doing this. And using a NOT gate, you can utilize a nighttime sensor, which also is kind of cool. And you, actually, you can actually set it to different times of the day, depending on how much you want, or when you want to activate it. Sorry. So that's about it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little mini tutorial. Um, yeah, my name's Kestel Caden. If you like this video, you know, leave it a like. Subscribe to my channel to see more of these tutorials every weekend. And uh, yeah, comment down below. Tell me what your thoughts are. Until next time. Have fun.